Hi, you've clicked on today's Tropical Tidbit for Friday, August 1st. The thoughts expressed in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please always consult the National Hurricane Center and National Weather Service, not me. Well, here is Tropical Storm Bertha finally got her name. Invest 93L, after all of that struggling, has finally managed to acquire the name Bertha. So this is a tropical storm now. You can see the exposed center of circulation racing off towards the west-northwest here, about to move over Martinique or just north of Martinique here and hopefully bringing some needed rain uh, to these islands which are in drought right now and it could use some rain so this is really a beneficial storm all in all the circulation though is small westerly winds only extend a couple dozen miles south of the center really and uh, so this is going to struggle as it comes west northwest it's got 50 mile per hour winds with it right now mainly in the uh, northeastern quadrant here and uh, this is basically what we expected a struggling tropical storm making it to perhaps moderate tropical storm strength as it moves across the Caribbean islands so this is pretty much going according to plan and uh, here's the track from the NHC bringing it uh, over western Puerto Rico here or perhaps through the Mona Passage between the Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico and then uh, scraping uh, maybe even the eastern Bahamas here before recurving in between Cape Hatteras and Bermuda out to sea over the western Atlantic. So uh, the Dominican Republic uh, and maybe even the Bahamas here could get some rain from this as it comes through and certainly Puerto Rico which also needs the rain um, but uh, this is not going to be a huge event uh, for these islands in here. And if anything, the most entertaining part of uh, Bertha's track may be out here over the open ocean where it may have a better chance to strengthen. If we look at the water vapor imagery right now, we see this broad upper low north of the Caribbean and uh, here's Bertha. And uh, so right now you can see kind of this upper level flow coming out of the south and southwest in front of Bertha. This is imparting some wind shear on her now. Uh, the good thing about wind shear in this part of the world is that sometimes it helps these weak waves fire some convection because this shear is usually of the divergent nature, which means it helps convection fire, but it simultaneously pushes that convection away from the storm. So it's kind of a give and take situation for these waves, uh, but this is going to not really help birth of that much over the coming days. It will probably stay pretty weak before uh, passing Puerto Rico and the Bahamas. Now, if Bertha's circulation does not pass over the high mountains of the Dominican Republic, then it may have a chance to survive in here. If it passes over the high mountains, then it may be good night to Bertha forever. Uh, but if her circulation survives to make it in here, uh, then she has a good chance uh, to strengthen because this upper low here, notice all the convection going off inside of it. This convection acts to warm the atmosphere aloft and uh, upper lows are driven by cold temperatures aloft which causes pressure gradients. So this is uh, basically weakening the upper low because this convection is releasing heat. And as this upper low weakens, its negative impact on Bertha will lessen over time. So here's the GFS initialization. The wind barbs are the upper level winds here. And the colors are the low level vorticity or spin. So you can see Bertha as the orange bomb right here. The broad upper level low, you can kind of see this clockwise flow in the wind barbs. And then here's the other upper low to the northeast. So here's the broad upper low that she's moving toward right now. Look in 36 hours though, uh, this upper low really is no longer well defined. It's weaker because of the convection that we saw in the water vapor satellite imagery. So you can see this, this outflow jet now developing into this secondary upper low up here to the northeast. Here's Bertha in this orange color here uh, over the Mona Passage. And this is still a little bit of a shearing flow, a little bit of wind shear here wind shear here but uh, there's an outflow jet here and notice this area of light winds aloft and this is important because when you see this um, it means that a tropical cyclone in here uh, could if it develops thunderstorms have a great chance at expanding its upper level outflow and if we look at the uh, this product that I have it shows essentially how much pressure gradient exists in the upper level atmosphere surrounding the area and the pressure gradients aloft tend to cage in the outflow of tropical cyclones and it it it, it squelches their breathing it, it prevents them from breathing easily so these purple colors here indicate that there is very little resistance to Bertha breathing once she gets in this area because this area of upper level winds is light and uh, so you can see that she has this to move into and then we have this trough over the eastern US as well which you can see here and this acts uh, to uh, promote divergence over this area of the Atlantic right here and this provides another outflow channel for Bertha when she gets into this area so by the time we get out to day three we can see that Bertha's in here starting to strengthen on the GFS and you see all of a sudden this anticyclonic clockwise outflow 
or a clockwise uh, high pressure system directly over the storm with this trough to the west. And uh, there will be a little bit of shear here, but it's a much more favorable situation uh, for a storm to strengthen. And I wouldn't be surprised that if Bertha survives to get to this point right here, that she may make a run at hurricane status on her way out to sea in between Cape Hatteras and Bermuda. So this would be no threat to the United States, likely no threat to Bermuda either. Uh, but could be at least an entertaining storm to watch as it heads out to sea after bringing some needed rain to the islands down here. Uh, so that is the basic story for Bertha, our second storm of the season. It is now August, so uh, this is getting towards the active part of the year. If it is going to be uh, active at all, this year is expected to be rather quiet in general, but if there's going to be storms, uh, they will generally form in August and September and uh, October as well. So we will watch these waves as they come across. Bertha happened to develop here, illustrating why they will struggle in this area here. The deep tropics are not favorable. Bertha showing us that by struggling. But up here is where we talked about earlier, before the season even started, where storms would find more favorable environments to strengthen and uh, why the U.S. East Coast could see developments uh, close by a lot this year. And Bertha may be another shot that comes right through here as a strengthening storm, illustrating those favorable conditions. So we shall see what happens. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.